Do you want to know my step-by-step -step process of getting a negative review and turning it into a very positive experience? Today, that's what we're talking about. Hi, my name is Mark Bentz and I'm the owner of one of the largest multidisciplinary clinics in Canada. I started the virtual CEO because I wanted to take clinic owners from overworked, underpaid, to living life on your terms and a clinic that is extremely profitable. Hey, first thing you gotta do with a negative review is one, take a deep breath. Too many people take it personally. And I used to take it personally. I used to go, oh my God, what's he saying about me? What's he saying about my clinic? What's he saying about my therapist? What's he saying about the front desk staff? And I'd work myself into a frenzy. Please, please, that's a very immature way of looking at it. I've matured, I want you to mature. And I want you to look at it and say, wow, man, this person's providing constructive criticism. And I better pay attention because here's the thing. It takes a lot for someone to go online and do that. You might go, oh, it's easy. No, it isn't. Maybe for angry people, it's easy because they like to go off on everybody. But if you're getting several bad reviews over a period of time, people want to give you that feedback. Whatever you're doing or your practitioners are doing or your clinic, whatever is happening in that experience they've had, it ain't working. So pay attention. Don't take it personally. So the first thing after calming down <laughs> is gather your information. <clears throat> of course, read the review. Um, if there's a voicemail, if left, listen to the voicemail. Uh, talk to the therapist. If it's about the therapist, typically it is. Maybe it's about the front desk staff, I don't know. But listen, figure out what the moving parts are that make up this negative review. Gather that information, let it sit for a little bit and just let it percolate, okay? Number one, it's an information gathering process. Okay, number two, put a little distance between uh, you and the negative review from that client so just like you need to calm down the client needs to calm down so you don't know what happened in their life right they could have got their car towed they could have just been fired they could have um i don't know what they could have had many shitty things happen in their life that day they show up you do something pretty sort of average it wasn't a great outcome but they go off on you because that just sent them over the edge and i've seen it people just go off and so what you need to do is have that cooling off period. Okay, for yourself and for the client. So what we do is we send out an email and we say, hey, um, thank you so much for your review. I'd love to uh, talk to you about it. Is there a good time for me to reach out uh, and contact you by phone? <clears throat> now, of course, by doing that, you do that you know, quickly, do that within six, seven hours. So you've recognized that they've done this, you're on top of it, they see that it's um, important to you, but you're putting time now in between that connection and when you actually talk to them. Maybe it's 24, 48 hours, whatever it is, but you can be assured, and I, this happened to me, I've done this 27 years, many clinics, I know giving it time calms them down, gives them a bigger picture to look at, okay? So number two, put some distance uh, at the beginning uh, from the review to when you will personally talk to them. Number three, when you talk to them, and you need to talk to them, so if it isn't you, and you've got a huge clinic, um, and you have someone that can do that, so that's what we have here. I have someone that deals with all these, uh, we call them patient opportunities, uh, and she reaches out and she talks to them. Listen, listen, listen. Don't be defensive. Don't come up with fucking excuses. Even though they might be justified. You might think, oh no, that's why. Don't come up with them. They don't want to hear it. It's time for you to listen to them, right? So do not have any rebuttals. Listen, I've talked about this in many videos. You want to figure out how to create rapport. And boy, let me tell you, it's a skill, and you know you're doing well, 
when you're dealing with someone who's complaining. But if you can develop rapport, that client's going to go, oh, this person's listening to me. When they know you're listening to them, they're going to be a lot um, uh, not so reactive. Okay? When they're not so reactive, you're going to get to the right result. The right result isn't them going off on Google, telling everybody how much they despise whatever happened to them. Uh, you know, that's not the right result. The right result is they've done that. You listen to them. You really figure out what's going wrong. And again, I'm always looking for their why. And it's a deeper reason. And then what happens is a great result is they go back on and they write a rebuttal. And they say, I really thank, you know, blah, blah, blah for listening to me. They made this. They did this for me. Um, you know, I'm really appreciative. Outstanding outcome. Of course, that doesn't happen very often. But that's what I'm always looking at. I'm training my staff to get that outcome. Okay, so you've listened to them. Now, what's the remedy? Number four, what's the remedy? So while you're listening to them, figure it out. Are they talking about, oh, they wasted my time? Are they saying, oh my God, you wasted my money? What are they saying? Are they saying, oh my God, the pain I'm in? What is it? So if I hear people talking about money, well, what's the easiest way to deal with that? I give them back their money. Boom! There's a quick remedy. So quite simply, after I listen to them, I say, you know, hey, John, I'm, I'm so sorry about that experience. I, I understand it now. These are the steps I'm taking to correct it. I'll talk to the therapist. I'll talk to the front desk staff. But what I really want to do is I want to give you back your money. You know, what happened is it didn't meet your expectations. I built my clinic 25 years I've worked on this. And if I'm not meeting clients' expectations, I don't want you to pay for it. I'm unhappy you had to spend your time. Your time is more valuable than your money. But I want to give you back your money because that's one thing I can do for you. Is that okay? Now, 99% of people go, wow, thanks. I didn't expect that. What you've done is now put them in the right place. They've calmed down. Okay? Then you could offer something else. So sometimes I offer another treatment and it's complimentary. Hey, John, you know, I want you to come in for a complimentary treatment. Maybe see another therapist. Maybe see another discipline. Because right? maybe that wasn't the right uh, discipline for them. I don't know. But it comes from listening. right? It comes from step three. Really figure it out. And step four is the real power. right? Step four is where you, you turn a, a person that's against you, you know, hates your therapist, hates whatever happened, you know, has a real strong, maybe it's not hate, <laughs> has a strong aversion to what happened to them. That's why they went online. And now you're going to turn them into a raving fan. And at least, at least after the conversation, they go away and go, okay, you know what? At Electra Health, they really care about what they do. And that's at least, that's the minimum. They think that because they'll come back when they know that they that you care about them they'll calm down because it probably came because of what's happening in their life i mean really from from all the years all the therapists i've dealt with it's so rare that the therapist did something so egregious in the appointment that that's why they're writing it it is it's because of a bit of a disconnect in their life. And they came in, boom, this sort of lack of caring with your therapist. They didn't develop rapport, whatever the case may be. You made them wait, whatever. The room was cold. I mean, it can be as benign as the room was cold. I had a person go off about that. So just remember, you know, most of these things don't really apply to the foundation of what you've created. But what they do apply is you need to solve them. So get a person in place to solve them. If it's really serious, of course, for me, anything really serious, I step in. And I make sure I contact them after uh, the other persons contact them. So therefore, now we've got a couple points of, 
uh, contact. I've listened now to what happened. We've gone through the four step process and now I'm going to step in and I'm going to go through the four step process. And by that time, I mean really 99.99% of any bad review I've ever had about our clinic has come out positively because you can now see that, whoa, now we've gone through two layers of people at the clinic and I'm talking to the owner and it's everything to me to make sure that this works out because this is why I'm in it. I'm in it to make sure it works out. I want to actually coach this person to make sure they get the right outcome. Because maybe, here's another example, maybe we just gave them the wrong therapist. Maybe, you know, let's example, massage therapy. Maybe they're looking for a deep tissue massage uh, and I put them in with someone that does craniosacral, right? Maybe it's that simple. And they go off about what a shitty treatment it is. Well, that's an exact example that's happened. Maybe it's that simple, right? You can easily solve that. But I assure you, they look at us and they go, wow, these people care. So please, take the four-step process. We used to do it, we've tried many different ways, but boy, this four-step process, it will turn a pissed off person <laughs> who writes a negative review into a raving fan. And that, my friends, is the opportunity looking for. So hey, get out there, take action. We'll see you in the next video.